Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane, this video is part of my favorite series, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite first person shooters and third person shooters. So, first person shooters and third person shooters kind of go hand in hand for me. I really just kind of like the action and how everything goes along. Some of the fast pace, some of the some of them are tactical. It's, it's just a lot of fun for me. The action is just like just a huge amount of fun and really great for me. So the first person shooters, like I said, they're really great for me. I've always been really happy with most of them that I've come across. These are some of my favorites. They're not in any particular order. Some of them are I'm, I'm still fairly good at. Others you'll see during this video that the gameplay I'm not, not so great, not so practiced anymore. But here we go. Like I said, not in any particular order. So the first one we're going to talk about is Halo 3 ODST. I know that there's a lot of people that like the Halo series and a lot of people talk about it. I don't think ODST actually gets as much recognition as it should get. It was released on the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One and as part of like the Master Chief release. Bungie 2009 was like the first release of it though. I really enjoy this series as a whole, but ODST just stood out to me. Especially the, the voice actor Nathan Fillion does a really good job. I've always liked his stuff. And ODST is like one of the only times that you're playing not as a guardian, or, or not, I mean, a guardian, as like one of the Master Chiefs or anything like that. You're just a regular ODST human in fairly light armor and stuff, and it's. The game is so much more about struggle than anything else. It's it's almost like the survival horror version of Halo, where even though you might be looking at a really bad weapon that you hate using on the ground, you'll go and pick up, say, like the Needler or something like that, because it has more ammo than your pistol does, and you need the ammo more than you need a weapon than you that you prefer. I've spent a lot of time on this game. It's really a lot of fun. It does not get nearly as much attention as it should, but it's definitely a thumbs up for me. Go back, play it. Let it stand on its own merit instead of trying to do anything where you're trying to compare it against other Halos. It's not going to be fair during that. If you just let it stand on its own merit, you're going to be pretty happy with it. Alright, next up, we're going to have Goldeneye on the Nintendo 64, released by Rare in 1997. Just a little bit of history, like, I, back in high school, I actually played a lot of Goldeneye. I, I beat the game, absolutely loved it. My dad even beat the game, and he loved it as well. And uh, it's, it's not a classic style first-person shooter thing where it's dual stick or anything like that because it's on the Nintendo 64. But I remember, I have lots of fond memories actually having parties with this game with my friends and... Yeah, I'm going to brag a little bit. I remember playing all for one, you know, a free-for-all game, and I won. And then we played a two versus two game and my team won. And then my friends decided, okay, no problem. Let's go. We'll play a three on one game. And I won. Now the three on one, I'll, I'll admit is a lot easier than a two V two for me because on a three on one, I can just basically shoot anything that moves and I don't care, you know, as ammos, whatever, you know, but it was, just a lot of fond memories of that game. Playing with my friend Sin and, and a couple of other friends from high school and stuff like that. And, I mean, I love it. It's it's a good storyline. It was a great movie adaptation. 
Who doesn't want to be Pierce Brosnan in GoldenEye? It's... They did all the weapons really well. It, it just... It felt really good, and it felt like you were James Bond while you were actually playing the campaign. So, with that, we're going to move on to the next game. It's Transformers War for Cybertron on the PlayStation 3 by High Moon Studios in 2010. I'm a Transformers fan. You know, it's plain and simple. I love Transformers. And I thought this adaptation or this story being told was really well done. And you can do some, like the, the physics engine in this game is really good. A lot of the characters are, are fairly well balanced. There can be some argument of certain classes in PvP being a little bit overpowered. But the campaign was just beautifully done. Everything just flowed really well. The physics, again, I really am a big fan of the physics engine that they used. And some of the adaptations that they made where if you were in vehicle mode and you were going very, very fast, specifically if you were a car and you're going really fast and you transformed back into the robot, you could basically do a power slide as the robot turns sideways, blast someone while, while you were going past a gap, and then transform back to the vehicle and keep going. It's very, very wonderfully cinematic that, you know, moves that you could just pick up and run with and just pull off these insane moves that just, you just felt great even attempting them. And when you finally got them, it was just, it was that cherry on top. I'm sad that High Moon and Hasbro aren't really on speaking terms anymore and that the games have been pulled from online and well not I don't know if they're pulled from online servers but I know that they're not for sale in digital stores anymore but if you can get the get these games actually both of the War for Cybertron games are really good War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron but it's it's definitely more geared towards a shooter than like Transformers Devastation, which is more geared towards the physical combat. Where you're just doing a 3D beat em up. But with that, we'll move on to the next and final game, which is I'm going to cheat a little bit and say the Unreal series. It's been released on various platforms and the PC. I believe the first. Edition was released by Epic Games in 1999. This is the Unreal Engine. I'm a big fan of the Unreal Engine. I'm a big fan of the Unreal World and the guns, specifically the the frack cannon. I love it. It's just one of my favorite things, especially the alternate fire. It was really well put together. I remember having, right when I got out of college, LAN parties and stuff, and we played various shooters, but man, did I ever light up when we decided we were going to play Unreal at these LAN parties. And, you know, they weren't too big, but like, you know, having having six computers linked together and having a LAN party and, and stuff like that was just a lot of fun. It's just... It's not really that an expensive game to get into or anything like that. I do suggest playing this on the PC, uh, just because mouse and keyboard seem to work really well for the Unreal series. Most of the other games, they work really well on their respective consoles. Or respective consoles, but... That's pretty much it, guys. I'm hoping that you enjoyed this list. Please let me know about... What is your favorite third-person and first-person shooters? If there's something that you think I should check out, let me know. Give me a comment in the in, down below, and I'll try to take a look at it. Well, that's it for this episode of Mundane Designs. 
I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking the link below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.